All right, I think we can get started. Um, thanks for coming to the session. My name is Don Harbison. I'm on the Apache Open Office Project Management Committee. Um, just a little bit about, a little bit about myself. Um, I joined the Open Office community in 2005 when it was under Sun's leadership. Um, great time going to their conferences in places like Slovenia and Barcelona and uh, Orvieto in Italy and so forth, various uh, interesting university towns across Europe. That was the community at the time. Um, and uh, I, as an IBM employee, that's my other hat, um, we brought uh, uh, technology from OpenOffice into IBM and built a product called IBM Symphony and derived from uh, OpenOffice technology. So I had a, a role in that, in that uh, stage as well. Um, but I'm here to talk about Apache OpenOffice and how we've gotten to today. Um, so I wanted to talk a bit about um, what I see as the opportunities in the market um, you know, really symbolized by the entry of Apache OpenOffice as a top-level project here. Um, I want to go through some timeline stuff for you, just so you have uh, chronology, the, the timeline of what we've been through for the last 18 months in particular. Uh, I don't think I want to bore you with uh, the deep history of, of Star Division in the 1990s and Sun's acquisition in 2000 and the, the creation of the open source OpenOffice.org community in 2000. Um, but it's been a long journey for many of us, um, and we're really excited to see the project now at Apache. Um, I want to talk about the people and the nature of the project today, so what we've done at Apache in particular. Um, and then I'm going to kind of you know, digress a bit onto this topic of document file formats. Um, in particular ODF, but I'll touch on Microsoft's OpenXML as well um, and what that signifies in, in the industry and what that means for OpenOffice and our user community. Um, and then really get into the sort of the details of what we're working on now, our current work plan and, and the outlook for the future, what we're planning to build on, on Apache OpenOffice going forward, our, our 4.0 planning and what we're doing with extensions. So just a bit about opportunities. Um, we really have sort of three uh, spheres here I'm talking about, the market opportunity, the community opportunity, and our approach. Um, just from a pure market opportunity viewpoint, um, as a premier open office, as a premier office productivity suite, uh, as an alternative to Microsoft Office, we have an opportunity to really drive commoditization, but more importantly, innovation in the space around office productivity. Um, if you think about um, Microsoft Office footprint in the marketplace for the better part of 20 years, it's been a monoculture and pretty much under the control of one company. Um, now at Apache, we have open office and we have many different ideas coming together on the project. There's really a, a great opportunity to innovate and take open office into new, new areas. But to do that, we're going to have to build a healthy and vibrant project, um, and it's going to have to serve the interests of the marketplace in many diverse ways. Um, you know, a market that demands uh, choice and openness. Um, so it's, it's a challenge for all of us in the project. Um, we need to promote open office extensions. Um, and one of the easiest ways to customize open office for a fit for purpose is to build extensions, and I'll be talking about that in the course of the talk. Um, over on the community opportunity side, um, you know, we still have this, this objective to continue to build open office as a premier alternative to Microsoft Office, to be seen as a brand that is recognized around the world um, as, as an office productivity suite that is open source, uh, freely available for download and use, that mitigates the need to purchase uh, a commercial product like Microsoft Office, and yet delivers you value um, and uh, the chance to um, get your uh, documents done in, in a very quick and easy way, and, and many times in your own native language. Uh, native language support is a really key focus for us. Um, so therefore, we kind of see the, the intersection of public sector and private sector as a sweet spot um, for the opportunity to build community. Uh, we saw this early with open office in, in the first decade of the century, 2000-2010, uh, um, where public sector was very quick to understand the value of this, this opportunity to drive, to really um, uh, make a more innovative uh, office document um, uh, tool available to their public service workers. Um, but biz big business caught on as well, and, and um, we saw many companies using Microsoft, uh, using Open Office as a way to uh, negotiate a better deal with Microsoft Office, at least on price, and in some cases actually adopt Open Office. So all these things have been in play in the market. Um, so our approach here is really to establish Apache, and now that we've made the, the transition, as our major development community for Office Productivity Software. We're a different project. If you look across the 100 plus uh, TLPs in the foundation, 
we stick out as the largest end user oriented software project in Apache. Um, something that the foundation membership and, and the board really thought long and hard about when um, we began incubation um, in June of 2011. We need to grow the open document format ecosystem around OpenOffice. Arguably, OpenOffice is the reference implementation for the ODF file format. Um, ODF itself was developed by Sun Microsystems and made a, a contribution to the open standards world uh, early in uh, 2001, I believe, at Oasis. Um, so we're, we're all about continuing to focus on uh, improvements in ODF and building the ODF ecosystem uh, based on our open office uh, applications. Um, the last point here is um, we had a fork in, in the open office that preceded the, the Apache project, actually. The, the LibreOffice fork, many of you heard about LibreOffice, I'm sure, um, a split off from the open office trunk, um, actually as early as 2007 under the leadership of Novell in a project called gooo.org. Um, and then later on in September 2010, following the uh, conference in Budapest, um, this group split off and created the LibreOffice project, LibreOffice.org. Um, they have a GPL sensibility about licensing. We have an Apache licensing sensibility, so there's just differences about licensing and, and ideology in that respect. But there's a lot of common uh, passion about the, the respective communities, and they overlap a lot. Um, so we're constantly looking for areas we, where we can reach out and, and cooperate with those guys and, and, and do common work items together. And it's an ongoing process to have that happen. Um, so just a bit about the product itself. Just how many of you are using OpenOffice today? Much you. So anybody unfamiliar with OpenOffice in particular? I can skip this chart there. <laughs> I just want to briefly mention it's, it is six apps um, under, under the, the suite. Um, and obviously, word processing or the writer app, uh, uh, the Impress pre presentation tool, and the Calc spreadsheet are the dominant applications. But we have a great drawing tool, and we're improving that. A good uh, application uh, environment with uh, basic and, and a, a mathematical formula editor as well for um, particular academic environments. All of this now has made it under the AL2 license um, in our first release. Um, we made a second release in, in August of 2011, uh, 2012. Um, and uh, we're now on path to our, our full release in mid-2013. Uh, um, platform support, Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows 8. Interesting footnote on Windows 8, Microsoft actually came to us early and uh, um, really sort of solicited us to uh, put support in for Windows 8 um, as part of the early adopter um, program. Um, so we did that, um, and that's now in the, in the platform support uh, list here. Linux 32 and 64-bit um, packages for our, you know, Debian as well, Mac OS. Um, translations, local language support, a very, very big focus for us. Um, one of the missions we have uh, at Apache is building software for the public good. And in a very real sense, very tangible way, OpenOffice does exactly do that for many people in many countries whose language is not supported by commercial office productivity. Um, we've had Khmer in Cambodia, all 11 dialects of uh, various ethnic groups in South Africa. Um, recently added Gaelic, uh, Asturian in Spain. Um, and just last week we had somebody pop up from the Arctic Circle, an Inuit Eskimo, who's working on, on doing some language preservation projects using OpenOffice. Very, very exciting kind of, of uh, area of the project that I really think is an, an important uh, one to not uh, forget about. Um, OpenOffice uh, has a pretty small footprint. You know, it sits on about 180 megs on your disk, maybe 170. Um, it starts up pretty quickly. Um, um, the interoperability focus here is, I can't um, overestimate this. This is a real gotcha in terms of pragmatic use in business where um, everyone is surrounded by oceans and oceans of Microsoft Office file formats, either the Microsoft binaries or the newer Microsoft XML file formats. Um, so interoperability is, is an ongoing focus for us and, and one with their continue to put a lot of effort into. And last but not least, accessibility support. Um, this is an item that is very, very important in particular in the United States and some other European countries where um, by law, um, companies must provide support for disabled persons, uh, in particular uh, individuals who lack sight. Um, so we're building that into Apache OpenOffice 4 this year. So here's the timeline for the last 18 months. Um, the, the journey really began when Oracle decided to exit the business in April 2011, uh, 2011 um, and made the donation of source code and, and signed all the paperwork and created the incubation proposal in June. 
Um, IBM joined shortly thereafter and, and made the decision to end our Symphony Fork. As I mentioned earlier, um, I was part of the team that brought um, you know, IBM to the Open Office Org community in 2007. Um, we had a private license, we IBM had a private license agreement at that time to build the Symphony product, but it really was not the preferred strat. We never really wanted to do that. We wanted to um, work, work directly in the community, but um, IBM and a lot of our enterprise customers just have a problem with um, GNU licensing. Um, so we needed to have a more liberal license. Um, so we had that now at Apache. We joined, we announced that we were going to end the Symphony Fork, um, and that was, that was uh, communicated in July of 2011. Uh, then the project team really dug in in serious uh, mode in October once the, the project community began to stabilize um, and plan the, uh, the, the initial 3.4 release based on the sources from Oracle that were now sitting in Apache Subversion. Um, thanks to Andrew Risto here, who did a lot of the Yeoman's work. Um, we wouldn't have open office without Andrew's support and an amazing effort to bring that source in and, and work with us on the IP clearance uh, to get it as an Apache release. So if any of you have been in, working in Apache projects in, on an Apache release, you know how detail-oriented the legal requirements are for IP. Um, we had over 10 million lines of code we had to scan, and um, we discovered lots of libraries that did indeed need to be re, uh, deprecated and replaced with alternatives that we did indeed find from open source uh, libraries elsewhere. Um, so by May of 2011, 2012, excuse me, um, we had our first official Apache release come out, um, the 3.4 release. Um, we were able also to add some new features in the graphics area. One of our, our star programmers uh, from the former Sun Lab, Oracle Lab in Hamburg, Germany, an excellent expert in SVG graphics, did some really cool new things in graphics that made it into 3.4. Um, and that's when we started to sort of see the, the uptick in, in demand because of the, uh, the updater uh, technology in OpenOffice that, that sort of made, it, made users aware that there was a new version available. Downloads started to take off. Um, we followed up with a 3.4.1 release in August, um, more bug fixes. Um, we had completed the Symphony source code contribution into SVN, and I, another onerous process at IBM to scrub the, the source, make sure there wasn't anything co company confidential in those source files, and then push it into S SVN as a branch at Apache um, Open Office. We had a, a long discussion as to how to proceed to go forward in the community one, one uh, uh, model was to build open office future on open office and then to merge Symphony value on top of that. And the other model was the opposite. Um, build open office on Symphony platform and then merge open office value on that. Um, because of the history and, and the, the value of the larger amount of code sitting in child workspaces from Sun Oracle and the need to preserve that community and grow it, uh, we opted for the former, build the future of open office on the OpenOffice 3.4 base, adding in Symphony value incrementally, which is going to take longer to do, um, but uh, what was a it really was the consensus of the community. Um, so that was August 2012. Um, by October, we graduated, and um, I see Joe from Infra here and uh, uh, one of our our mentors on the project. It was an interesting process to get to graduation uh, in the community. A lot of strong personalities, uh, a lot of learning of the Apache way. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of, you know, just you know, sort of the qualitative aspects of building a healthy community were probably the most challenging things we had to accomplish, in order to qualify for graduation and take that ballot forward. So I'm pretty pleased and proud that we did achieve that. That's a major milestone to become a TLP here at the foundation. Um, so by November, um, we were deep into the 4.0 planning. Um, I, I personally got involved in, in uh, putting together the ACE, uh, the Apache Conference in Europe in Sinsheim in terms of the programming uh, grid. Unfortunately, I personally was not able to attend due, due to a family emergency, but uh, uh, I was excited to, to see that come together with, with our open office team having a, a major track there. Um, it's no, no secret, I think, amongst all of you here that the open office community is predominantly based in, in Europe, so an Apache Con in the northwest of the US uh, is seeing a, th a thin level of participation. Um, Worldwide downloads by February were uh, cresting around 38 million, and I think as of this week, I can say clearly we have a 40 million uh, download number. That's actually conservative if you want to look at some of the other sites. Um, but we do wire in Google Analytics um, onto our download site, and um, we, we're pretty confident that number is, is solid. Um, so it's a pretty stunning number, um, about a million downloads a week. Um, so if things keep track in this way, we'll probably be 80 million or so downloads by the end of the year and, and 100 million or so by this time next year. Um, 
That's a lot of users. Um, we have a stats project um, down here, the open office org, uh, stats, uh, some Python scripts that are wired in thanks to SourceForge. Uh, you can go there and take a look in detail to see the, the download counts and our committer um, stats and some other in interesting data. Um, also, um, one of the things Oracle did, uh, with a, not only did they grant their uh, software source code to, a, to the foundation, but they also transferred the trademarks uh, for openoffice.org to the foundation. Um, the openoffice.org website itself gets three quarters of a million hits a day. Um, so another really, really high traffic site that uh, symbolizes the kind of huge interest we have in this project from the end user community. I want to talk about the community now. Um, it's, it's really veterans and newbies both. Um, you know, these, these are actually in the file that I transferred. I'm not sure where the, uh, the presentation files end up, but there are links in here. And um, I'll just uh, go over here and, and show you that uh, we do have um, this directory of volunteers. Um, we, we have, you know, alphabetized um, all the uh, people that in the, in the project by, by name, by location, by area of interest, what they're interested in doing. Um, so we maintain this, this, this list is constantly growing. Uh, for our volunteer directory. We have, I think, um, not sure what the exact count of the, this directory is at this point, but um, it, it is indeed growing. Um, in terms of um, um, the other uh, aspects here, the size of the community, um, we have um, you know, th this particular page on our wiki which talks about um, our user groups. Um, I mentioned the stat page, uh, some interesting sort of factoids. Uh, we have an announced list that we have over 9,400 people subscribed to our announcement list. Uh, so individuals that opted in to hear about news from our project. Um, on our forums, we have over 55,000 people active in our forums um, subscribing. Uh, this is where we have our self-service support for end users uh, coming together um, in various languages. Twitter over 1,000 followers, Facebook over almost 4,000 followers, Google Plus over 2,000. So we really are building community using social media in the project and it's quite exciting to see that uh, grow and thrive. Um, in terms of business, uh, one of the interesting attributes of the Apache licensing, of course, is its permissive nature. There's nothing that says anyone cannot um, you, you know, wrap a business around an Apache license project or software. Um, so we hope to see more consultants uh, signing on to our consultants directory. Um, offering programming services, customization, training, um, a whole sort of variety of service and, and support uh, um, offering should be made available on that directory and this will help um, get these uh, folks in, uh, indiv as individuals or small companies um, some, some real business, some real um, commercial action. Um, in the extension space we have over 300 extension authors who have built over 700 extensions. Um, and these extensions, since they're not licensed um, consistently under, say, the Apache governance, um, we were very fortunate to have SourceForge offer to host these for us. Um, and I'll talk a bit about that in, in, in a little further into the presentation. Um, but the extensions are available in, in volume and they do a lot of really cool things. Um, we have authors that have written books on, on OpenOffice in the past. Um, we're currently in the process of having a call for documentation specialists. As we're ramping into the 4.0 plan, we're going to need uh, doc writers to step up and, and volunteer to write new doc uh, for OpenOffice 4.0. Um, interesting, we, we do count our LibreOffice colleagues as part of our community. They, they have recently rebased LibreOffice 4.0 on the Apache OpenOffice source code. Um, so this is quite flattering that they chose to do that. Um, we're pleased, again, to serve the public good by offering our source under the Apache licensing. Um, they chose to relicense under the Mozilla public license. Again, um, sort of an ideological position around licensing shows its uh, face, but uh, we're pleased that they are indeed taking advantage of our source. Um, I talked about the directory volunteers, 126 names on that list. Um, you know, we, we have our, 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 our mailing list for um, OO Dev, which is really this large, sprawling primary dev list email. Uh, has over 442 people subscribed to it currently, and that's our main development uh, mailing list. Um, we do our bug reporting, and we have Jira and Bugzilla going on. Uh, we have 55 translators active in the project for localization. We have a dedicated team who's really zeroed in on the website infrastructure, the heavily trafficked openoffice.org site, um, continuing to make improvements there. Um, so just an awful lot of stuff going on in this project. It really is a broad and a deep project and there's many, ways, many areas where 
if you're interested to get involved, uh, you, you can really, <laughs> there's more, enough, more than enough work to go around here. Um, committers right now, just a key thing there, we've, we've had uh, 122 committers in the project. We, we uh, went through a phase where it kind of flattened out uh, around 90 committers and then it spiked up to 122 and it's kind of holding steady at that level. We think that's a healthy amount um, and so we're pleased with that growth as well. Uh, okay, back to this. So yeah, the Get Involved page, we, you know, in terms of how we appeal to growing the community, uh, we, we really want people to know how they can get involved in the project. So again, uh, on our um, website here, this is the, the actual Open Office Org website where we have this Get Involved page. So when we have a call for volunteers, as we just had this week for documentation specialists, um, they, somebody will raise their hand on list and say, I'm really interested in getting started, what do I do? We'll typically direct them over to this page just to give them an orientation about the project, um, you know, where you can get started and things like that. Um, and there are other pages, here we introduce the, the mailing lists and new volunteer orientation modules that we've written. Um, and so we really are trying to build the tools and the sort of the, um, you know, a much more sort of self-evident way to get started even though it is a very complex and, and deep project uh, and difficult to navigate. We're trying to address that problem and make it easier. Um, as I said, there are many roles, and I think you just saw those scrolling by from coder to documentation specialist to QA to translation to marketing to web infrastructure. Um, so there are these different disciplines within the project that do need volunteer support. Um, I'm going to just sort of highlight it on, on the conduct policy here because this is one of the, one of the key things we needed to get done um, prior to graduation. We really wanted to make a, uh, the project committee, the PMC, have a, a, a good set of guidelines that we could invoke um, as we get into argumentation or conflict in, in the community, we'd have a way to fall back and, and you know, reduce those uh, issues and, and have a healthy community and, and not fall into a, a problem of having poisonous people, as they would say in, the, in that, that video, um, take down the project health. Um, so the conduct policy has been drafted and it's, it's available on, on the site. Um, I think I've got that actually up here too somewhere. Yeah, just a bit about that, you know, things like respect one another, remember the open office mission, be nice, you know, these are these obvious things, but, you know, don't respond when you're angry, you know, sit on it, you know, these are just general, you know, these are applicable to any project. Um, well, we, we definitely uh, are benefiting from these now here at the Apache Open Office Project. Okay, um, and I, I talked about mailing us already, we have all those lists. Um, yeah, I don't think I need to do that. Okay, let's move on. Um, I just want to talk briefly about something that's going on in the document space that's sort of, I'm going to digress a little bit here. Open Office is an application suite as I was just taking you through the details. But what, what's really going on here with this open source project is pretty exciting if you think about the, the, the way we're, we're, we're building documents in, in our current sort of uh, spectrum of tools and and technologies as many of us are now working in cloud environments, working on our mobile devices, our, our phones and our tablets. Um, we really have made the progression from us an era where documents were closed in, in a kind of a binary sense, a black box, um, and, and the contents of that document file were opaque. Um, the monoculture that was um, building those file formats in, you know, inhibited innovation. Um, we really prevented anybody to really join that, 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 join that business. Um, with, with the file format in this ODF sense becoming open um, and with XML technology, the contents of a document file are now open and transparent, can be inspected programmatically um, and invites in innovation. And the barrier to entry for any developer with a great, really great idea is quite low. Um, so things are really changing and have been changing in this, this way for some number of years. Another way of thinking about it is in the past we had office documents that were unstructured, format intensive, you know, you were always worried about your bold italic underscore and your, you know, your font and those sorts of things that were not in a structured sense but done sort of ad hoc as you were building a document. There was a sort of very, very strong focus on your print output. Uh, think back uh, to the days where, you know, you were wrestling with print drivers in, in, you know, in the old uh, uh, win early Windows days, uh, it was really a, a bear. Um, and over, over time, the network effect of, of the file format itself locked users into that, that monoculture. I mean, now moving today to a world where documents are much more social, we're building documents with wikis on right, blog content, we're uh, putting content in our smartphones and our tablets, 
we really kind of insular to the format. It's you can markup language for those devices, or it might be XML. Uh, we're very seldom printing documents, unless you're in a particular industry like legal or government, when you, when you actually have to print a document and sign it with ink and pen, and that kind of antiquated way of going forward with documents. Um, they become much more social in terms of commenting and review and approval and the sort of the overall life cycle of the document. Authoring process is not, in business at least, is not so much uh, done by a single individual anymore, but by teams of people working uh, asynchronously and, and in some cases synchronously on that document content. Um, and la lastly here, the, these, these two last points, semantically rich and programmable. Um, you know, with ODF 1.2, we added RDF uh, metadata capability in the SPAC. Um, so open office and other ODF implementations can now start to take advantage of that and do things with metadata either um, tacitly or explicitly uh, to make it easier to search, find, and locate document fragments, uh, understand provenance of a document segment, uh, a paragraph, a footnote. Um, lots of different interesting uh, use cases can be exploited um, using metadata. And programmable in the sense that um, we, we've done some interesting projects in the ODF community, one of which is at Apache also, the, the Apache ODF Toolkit, a Java a library for programming document solutions uh, using the open document format. So what is ODF? ODF's next XML specification. It was created by Sun Microsystems and donated to Oasis in, in 2001. Um, we have a multi-vendor uh, TC technical committee working on the ODF specification at Oasis. Uh, we meet, meet every week, every Monday. Um, we've um, had a, a 1.0 ratified by the ISO organization in Europe and a 1.1. 1.2 um, is now finished as an OASIS standard and making its way into ISO this year. Um, so what continues, as I mentioned, we have toolkits in, in Java, also Python, ODF-PY, um, for programming ODF documents in Python, if that's your preferred language. Um, some really great innovations in ODF-PY done by a team in Paris. Um, they're doing really cool stuff there. Um, so ODF, we, we believe that ODF really gives you the most choices for interoperability and future-proofing your, your information, your document content. Um, we think it's technical, elegant, and, and pragmatically implementable. Um, just a bit about the ODF timeline. I mentioned 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. Um, we continue to work on that. Um, I mentioned RDF metadata. Um, now here's what's really interesting. What, what's Microsoft's response? Um, you can see that uh, very little response to support ODF, starting with 1.1 in, in Office 2007. Open edit saved, but in, in reality it was really kind of dead on arrival. It didn't really work, um, particularly in spreadsheets. Um, as you progress through uh, to Office 2010, it gets a little better. Um, this, this is actually a table sourced from a blog post by uh, a Microsoft uh, Office leader, uh, Gray Knowlton, uh, last August 2012. Um, and you can check it out for yourself. The, the, the furthest right column, Office 15, is the, what they call the new office, um, adding ODF 102 support um, much more uh, seriously. So we're in the process of testing more detail how well that support is, is rendered, but um, um, I think we're, this is going to be an ongoing challenge to improve interoperability with the XML formats from Microsoft and ODF. Uh, right now at the TC, we're working on ODF, ODF 1.3, uh, primarily a focus on change tracking. Um, a, a spec, uh, an area of the spec that was missing. Um, we voted the, a technical solution uh, to be approved, and so that, that, that early development of the spec is behind us. Um, now we're into the CD, the community, community drafting point. Standards work is time consuming, <laughs> it moves slowly, um, but we're going to get there. Um, so I mentioned the ODF toolkit. Uh, just a little more about that. It's, it's an ODF API exposing a high level of abstraction of the open document format for our developers. Um, so you can quickly uh, get productive building ODF solutions and process document content. Um, the goal of the project was to reduce the friction, you know, the resistance to building a new class of programmable document solutions. Um, so just a couple examples, uh, or one I'll give you right off the bat here is um, Andrew was mentioning one of his colleagues in the accessibility area um, recently used the ODF toolkit to generate documents for testing in, in accessibility. Is that right? Um, another solution was uh, a large banking environment in Germany needed to process a high volume of documents in, in a, you know, yeah, I think they were just, it was a, like a mainframe solution that was just tearing through a pile of documents and they needed to create ODF XML. Um, so in a very headless fashion, a very highly automated way, the solution was rendered. Um, this particular project is in the incubator right now. Um, it's, it's staffed with a, a very small team. Um, 
so take a look. It's pretty pretty cool stuff. Um, a lot of the uh, convenience APIs are done. Um, we're going to have a release, I think, in a week or so, very soon, to have a, a new release. So um, go over there and take a look. Um, so what are we doing right now with OpenOffice in, in our work stream? Um, well, I mean, I mentioned our, our focus on, on you know, building the community and mentor, you know, asking for new volunteers to step forward. Um, one of the challenges we, we kind of run into is we had too much success in, in a sense. Um, and we had, we had a call for QA volunteers before the holidays. And uh, in a matter of a few days, we had 50 people stacked up. Um, and, and the timing was a little, we didn't sort of think ahead that the holidays were looming. And, and uh, so our veteran QA team uh, kind of went off on holiday when we had our, our volunteers waiting to be instructed. You know, it's like a little bit embarrassing. So we learned from that. Um, but this is something that I think uh, will get better and smoother over time. Um, as I, I showed you earlier, we have a lot of the tools and, and the instructions available on the wiki and on the website to help newbies get, get, get oriented. Um, so that, that's an ongoing process. Um, technically, in the, in the 4.0 planning process, we are focusing on the user interface. Uh, OpenOffice uh, is a pretty old uh, UI, to be really honest. I mean, it was, it was designed in the 90s and, and buffed up a little bit in the, in the first decade, but it really hasn't, you know, hasn't kept pace with the times. Um, so we're doing a couple of things. We're working on um, um, bringing in from Symfony an award-winning feature, which was the sidebar or property panel in Symfony. Um, which is a very efficient way to, to uh, adjust properties in your documents. Um, so we're looking at bringing that and in, merging that into uh, OpenOffice and we're making good progress there. Um, a continued focus on interoperability. Um, again, with source from uh, IBM Symphony coming in to improve our ODF and OpenXML interoperability. Um, some of us in, in the design area, particularly around uh, marketing and, and, and user experience design are offering ideas around refreshing the brand. Um, so this means logo, uh, some of the sort of skinning, if you will, of, of the open office uh, splash screen and home pages and so forth. Um, so that, that discussion and that process is, is fully underway now. Um, more, more difficult space is accessibility, porting over the uh, iAccessible 2 framework from Symfony. Um, just a side comment about that, the IE2 specification itself was drafted by an IBM accessibility expert and contributed uh, to the Open Standards Organization right before it was absorbed into the Linux Foundation in late 2006. Um, the actual coding of that IE2 spec was done by the IBM Symphony team in China, um, and IBM invested millions of dollars there. We also invested another seven million dollars um, actually working with the accessible technology vendor, the ATEV, uh, community for screen readers, screen magnifiers, um, and, and other um, tools that enable uh, documents to be perceived by individuals with disabilities. Um, so that's a big area that's complex um, and one that we're taking on to finish for Windows uh, this year on OpenOffice. Uh, improvements in writer and draw. I mentioned our guy Armin Legrand is doing great works in, in, in draw. Oliver Wittman is doing some really cool things in the writer tool. So we'll see improvements there. Um, the last item here, patch delivery mechanism. Um, we're hearing from large enterprise accounts that are really seriously talking about deploying 40,000, 100,000, 200,000 seats of Apache OpenOffice right now. Um, and they're not gonna get there um, if we don't uh, deliver a really good patch delivery mechanism that allows them to update their instance of OpenOffice on desktops uh, incrementally rather than you know, wiping out the old version and slamming down a new version and chewing up the network bandwidth in the process. So uh, our goal is to deliver a patch delivery mechanism uh, also later in 2013. How does this look on the chart? Well, I mean, you put it all together, this is what it looks like, um, you know, starting in the lower left-hand corner with 3.4 on May of 2012, 3.4.1 in August, graduation, 4.0, we're targeting now May, June. Uh, that's kind of the chatter on list. Uh, looks like a, you know, an RC in May and then several RCs before we get to a release candidate that is uh, gonna be the formal one for ship um, in June. Uh, 4.1 we think will be six months later, so the end of 2013. And again, I've kind of stacked up all the content that we're planning in that uh, box in the upper left. Um, I've talked about almost all of that, so I'm not gonna go over it again. Um, this is a little more of a drill down in terms of usability. Um, we, we had a really, really couple of very good experts in UI design working on uh, color schemes, panel design, and so forth. Um, 
you can go to the, this is a link I'm not going to go there now but there, on the wiki if you want to want to drill into that you can do so and see um, all the different well, I'll take a quick look all the um, let's see I, think I got it down here somewhere is that here Yeah, so this is the UI, the UX experience design exploration, the task panel, task content panel, um, different proposals. Um, so th these may all seem very similar to you, but they're actually different. <laughs> so we're actually, you know, examining different visual treatments for these panels um, as Andre and um, the team in Germany is coding them up. So the, these are progressing quite well and, and going to give a real new level of productivity uh, in 4 We're pretty excited about this stuff. Okay. Um, after the 4.0 plan, we're going to move on to some real, more, <laughs> somewhat less exciting things like uh, number and bullet settings. That's been a common complaint. Um, picking up presentations, uh, instant filtering, uh, a data pilot functionality, some other things that are a little more prosaic than these uh, bigger ones in 4.0. Uh, a little drill down accessibility here. Um, the kind of you can see how we're like breaking the project work down. Um, you know, it, it's, it's complex. The, bringing the UA to i 2 bridge in, that's already been done. Um, we've actually finished. This, this February deadline was completed. Um, we're now, we now have builds available for test. Um, I've reached out to the accessibility community in, in universities and uh, um, some of the um, open source accessibility experts down in Australia, a project called NVDA. Um, they're getting really excited about this. So this is, uh, is going to start to really gain momentum quite soon as testing begins in earnest and we, uh, we, we get this thing to really work properly. Um, okay, so now about extensions. Um, this is just an example, um, but as I mentioned, extensions have been done for years and years um, by the community. Um, I just highlighted a couple here that IBM's doing. Some people are always asking, why is IBM interested in this project? You don't make any money on it, it's free. What are you guys doing? Um, what we're doing is we're extending OpenOffice to bolt into some of our social business applications. Um, so we have a cloud environment we call IBM Connections, which has a complete set of sort of Facebook-like functionality hardened for business, uh, blogging, wikis, profiles, um, you know, the whole sort of typical range of function that you would think of in a social framework. Um, it actually is an open social container, um, and um, it has a file um, a repository function. So we're saving as from OpenOffice directly into the IBM Connections files. Uh, making the documents available for uh, operation by cloud tools. Um, that's one, one example. Um, another one, this is just a, a, was a proof of concept we did about a year ago. Um, we have this teed up for actually coding and delivery later this year. Um, but we took advantage of the OpenOffice API, and the idea here was to render documents social. Um, you're working on your desktop, but you really are, you want to be connected to your community, your network that's in your social framework. Um, so we, we actually customized the um, the, the UI up here, so you would share your chart with your network, um, and then um, what we were talking about really doing is, is sharing the chart into your activity stream um, in connections. So it's analogous to putting into a Facebook stream, for example, or a Google Plus stream. Um, and then once it's there, then you ask for a um, comment. So you probably can't see this very well here, but there's the actual chart there, and um, the, when you, the person published the chart, they asked for a review and comment, and they did get the comments here. Um, and then we actually encoded it in the demo so that the comments were returned seamlessly back to your um, editing session in OpenOffice on your desktop. So you could continue to edit on your desktop but have that feedback from your social network. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, as, as I said, um, extensions are not consistently licensed, so we had to host them outside the foundation. SourceForge. Um, made a very generous offer to host our extensions at extensions.openoffice.org, um, and uh, so they're all up there now. Um, this is actually a chart contributed by uh, my source for friend Rich Bowen, who's not in the room, but uh, you all know Rich. Um, you know, we, they had to do a lot of uh, extra work here. We really do appreciate it very much. Um, so the extra site is also not just uh, extensions, but also templates. Um, so many people do templates for specific uh, types of documents, and you can upload those at templates.openoffice.org and make them available to anyone to use. Um, very, very cool way to make OpenOffice much more useful. Um, he makes a comment about it's using Drupal, <laughs> so if it doesn't have to, I know that's, that's a rich comment, Joe. <laughs> I don't take credit for it. 
Um, okay, so uh, the, another area that SourceForge really helped us was planning our downloads. We were quite concerned that uh, um, Apache Infra was going to be uh, having its hands full when we put 3.4 up, and uh, SourceForge stepped in and, and offered a pretty extensive mirror, uh, organiz mirror, mirror setup, which kind of looks like that. <laughs> And pretty, pretty huge SourceForge mirror network to support our, our millions of downloads. Uh, pretty cool. Um, this is a sort of a screenshot of the download stats I was talking about. Again, uh, Python scripts from SourceForge that we've wired in. This is not a, a, a this takes some manual updating. So if you go to OpenOffice.org stats right now, you'll, I think you'll see February 24th might be the last date, 39 million and something and change. Um, since it's February 27th now, I'm pretty sure we're 40 million. Um, the top level, there are daily downloads. You'll see just bouncing along. Um, and it runs about 135,000 downloads a day. Um, spikes to 190, sometimes 170. Um, but it's been, you can see how it's been pretty consistent. Um, and, you know, these big dips back here in August, that's when we shipped our 341. So it goes up when we do a, a new release. Um, one of our project members, Rob Weir, did a, 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 this map. Uh, using the IBM Many Eyes technology, sort of this <laughs> it's a little arcane, but but just to, you know, visually speaking, it gives you an idea that uh, Europe it really is where the saturation point is for downloading of of open office. But we also have the Falkland Islands, <laughs> we've got you know some other interesting interesting places uh, downloading uh, Apache Open Office. <laughs> All right, so just to wrap up, I'm, one of the big reasons I'm here, I'm constantly trying to learn more about. Uh, other projects at Apache that have uh, sort of complementary relationships. And um, so I've kind of grouped them in, in three areas here, uh, social uh, tools and document stores. Uh, so in the social area, Apache Rave, Shindig um, are, 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 are key. Um, I, I really am excited about the opportunity to, to team up with uh, Rave and Shindig a little more uh, proactively um, and do some things with documents that uh, haven't been done before um, to make them social. Um, in tooling, we have the ODF Toolkit, as I mentioned, uh, but obviously the POI project. One of our um, key members and mentors, Dave Fisher, uh, is on the POI project and, and keeps bringing that up occasionally. Tika, PDF Box, uh, for document stores, Chemistry, and Jackrabbit. I'm sure I'm leaving some out, um, but you know, the foundation wouldn't be as, as vibrant and as exciting as it is if we weren't looking sideways and, and, and really looking around to see what projects could bear on the one we're working on. To improve what we're doing and 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 you know share and, and mutual benefit mutual benefit occurs. So uh, join us and work together if you like. Um, I'm available for, for today and tomorrow. Uh, Andrew here is from, from the PMC also. Um, so uh, uh, you know tackle us in in the hallway. We'd be glad to talk to you about Open Office in more detail. Thanks. Any, any questions? Um, if you have a question, I think I'm supposed to ask you to use the microphone for the benefit of the, the video. Okay. All right. Thanks. Oh, we do have a question. Yeah. You talked at the beginning that this is working. Yes. Uh, you said at the beginning uh, that um, sort of uh, long-term aspirations of Open Office as a project. Um, include largely uh, providing a free alternative to Microsoft Office mm -hmm. Suite, obviously, um, and also providing opportunities for innovation in the uh, document editing um, yes. sphere. Um, the user interface and the, uh, the, the the paradigms of sort of um, style tweaking type of formatting as you as you write a document that seems to be one of the areas where there's not been much change. And exactly, it seems to me as a user that the focus so far with good reason has been on parity of user experience mm -hmm. with Microsoft's uh, right. stuff. And uh, I just wondered if you knew of or have an, uh, anything to say about um, plans either within the project or outside the project for sort of um, getting away from that, getting more towards um, well, the, sort of the elephant in the room is document structure. Yeah, I think I think the elephant here is in the room is is tablet, right? If if Open Office was to be surfaced on a tablet with with gesture, um, that would be a radical change in the user interface, right? Oh, uh, I, I was thinking more of um, Google Docs. Uh, no, even Google Docs is is rather 
stuck to the sort of, you know, select italic or yeah. select bold rather than sort of format your document as a structure of, you know, here's a heading and, right. and, and so like have really kind of first class style management. That's my kind of... Bugbear. Right. Okay. Because style management is not really, to me, a first true, class feature. True. True. I, I agree with you. That's one I, I, met, I called that out with the ODF section. Uh, um, you know, the unstructured documents is a nice way of saying the, the sort of the, the mess you create when you use uh, yeah, point and click and, and users just go crazy. They don't understand templates, they don't understand styles properly, they override them, and they create unique situations. Um, yeah, I, I think templates is a way to really get, um, help prove that. Um, so, you know, building good templates gives you um, a way to structure your documents. Um, does, but, it, uh, does ODF, um, you said it was um, sort of uh, elegant design, does, yeah. it, does ODF provide sort of it does. A, a good framework? It for, does. For yeah, take, take a look at the toolkit if you, if you want to, if you've got your Java skills sharp and you want to use Java, use the ODF uh, toolkit if Python and then the ODF PY. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Um, you can, um, and I, I don't know the details of what um, Andrew's colleague did with generating documents, but you can generate uh, structured documents programmatically quite quickly using the, those tooling, those APIs in ODF XML. But I think your point was more, how are we going to you know, adjust the user interface for end users? Is that what you're, that's where you're going? Yeah, well, yeah. kind of whether you had any project directions or yeah. sort of. Yeah. It, it's, it's. <laughs> Everybody, I think, has this kind of idea of, wow, it would be really neat if we could, you know, change the whole paradigm of how people create documents. And, but at the same time, if you look, even at Microsoft, when they just said, okay, well, we'll put a ribbon instead of a toolbar, and the, the fire that they took back was, you know, pretty substantial. And so, I think there's a bit of a problem in the fact that when you do try and change these paradigms, um, it, it's very difficult because a lot of people are stuck in the current paradigm. Sure. So I, uh, so it's it's a, I think that it's a difficult problem, and, and at some point someone will create something that, that you know moves everything forward a quantum leap. Um, it'd be great if someone showed up at the project and offered to do this. At the same time, I think you know the the current uh, focus of the project is on uh, you know. A, some more narrowly focused. It's one of the, yeah, we're challenged with having, you know, 40 million downloads and we, we have a user community that, you know, doesn't want massive change, but they do want improvement. Sure. So it's incremental. Um, but the code, the source is available and if you have, a, you know, an itch, an itch to scratch and you want to dive in there, you, you go, go, go for it. Thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks. Anybody else? All right then, thank you all. <laughs>